Hi, this is David Pearl from Street Wisdom, speaking to you from my elegantly furnished, exquisitely tidied house in London. Um, a lot of you seem to be enjoying the tune-ups that we provided uh, uh, to do at home. Street Wisdom comes home, we're calling it. Um, and so um, here's some more. Here's some more things you can play with. Street Wisdom, as you remember, is, uh, is, is a way of getting the fresh answers to the questions on your mind. And as the name suggests, we normally conduct Street Wisdom workshops um, out there, in the street, <laughs> out there. Um, but right now, um, we're focusing on uh, techniques that you can use uh, and get the same effect, get fresh answers to the questions on your mind without leaving your home. I'm calling them mini quests. Quests because, as in Street Wisdom, they're about get answering questions and also they involve moving around like a mythical quest. And mini because um, they don't need much space and they don't need much time. I'm guessing we've all got questions, particularly now. And the tendency is to either you know, phone a friend for answers or go on the internet. Siri and I have a particularly intimate relationship at the moment. But these quests are designed for you to find the answers that you need for yourself, by yourself. And using not the internet, but the surroundings, the surrounding world, the, the universe that's around us, which I think you'll find is full of answers. We just don't normally see them because we're hurrying past or in a way they're so familiar, they're hidden in plain sight and we just don't think them worthy of note. So that's really what these mini quests are designed to do. What you'll need is you'll need two things really. You just need, you'll need a question and we can give you some ideas about that. And you'll need to tune up your senses. That's to say, you know, broaden out your awareness so that you're picking up more from these surroundings than you would normally. Um, and to do that, you'll find the film that I've done previously really helpful. Okay, let's get on with it. Hi, this is David from Street Wisdom, and I hope you're well. Now today, uh, I wanna talk about the question, what's next? This is a question that many people in many ways ask very often on street wisdom, what's next at work, what's next in love, what's next in life, and so on. The questions can be phrased in different ways, but essentially we're really interested as humans on what comes next. And particularly at a time like this, where there seems to be huge amounts of disruption and it seems to be very difficult to plot your course ahead. Um, so if you're feeling that way at any time, uh, cooped up in your house uh, or your, your flat, and you're thinking, how can I, at this point of maximum disruption, uh, plot my way ahead? I think you'll find this exercise useful. And it's called I write about how to do this uh, exercise in my book, Wonderful. Um, and like all the exercises from Street Wisdom Comes Home, it isn't done sitting here at the computer. Uh, it's done using your body and moving around the house. So come with me. So in this exercise, what I'm gonna ask you to do is think about your story to here, the, the, the journey you've been on to get you to this very point. And I wanna show you two different ways of thinking about that, one of which, which sort of saps energy and one of which gives energy. Now, it's gonna involve telling the story to somebody and if in, in case you're in a house with no one in it or in case you're in a house full of slightly unsympathetic, itchy people, what I would suggest you do is you're gonna tell it to yourself by the use of a mirror, which is why I brought you here. What happened to my hair? I know that's what you're thinking, hair? Anyway, oh, by the way, this, this film is being done thanks uh, with the help of my daughter enrolling a young person in doing this. Thank you, Els. So, the first telling is I want you to tell yourself in the mirror how you got from school to here using the word then. For example, I'll just give you a sense of it. Uh, I'm David, I was born in Essex in England in 1960, um, and then my family moved to the centre of town when I was seven, then I went to secondary school where I used to play music, then I went to university, then, then, then. You get the idea of how you got from birth to this point now using the word then. You've got 60 seconds, go. Okay, great. Now I want you to do it again, but change the words slightly. I want you to use the words, but then, so then. Let me demonstrate. So I'm David Pearl. I was born in Essex outside London in 1960. But then my parents thought that we'd have better op educational possibilities if we moved to London. So we moved to London where I went to normal school, but they discovered I had a voice. So my teacher took me to Covent Garden where I got a job, but eventually my voice broke. So then I took up the cello and then the double bass. But then someone discovered that I was much better on the band, so on and so on and so forth. So I want you to try that, but then, so then, but then, so then. See how that's different. 
So did you notice the difference between those two tellings? The first generally has got a bit less energy and that's really the, the plan. It's a little bit like what you might see in LinkedIn, the, the, the sequence of events. But the second, but then, so then, is a little bit more like a story. It's got a little bit more energy. And that's really what I want you to focus on. Imagine if you like that um, the difference between stories and plans, I like to say, is uh, a plan is the most direct route between A and B and stories are the most interesting route between A and B. And if you look, most of us, if we look carefully, we'll see that our lives have got these highs and these lows, these low points, ups and downs. And what I want you to think about, particularly at the moment, is what happens at these low points to turn them into turning points. In other words, when you're feeling low, as it were, what changes to make that line buck up and shoot up with lots of energy? Because that's one thing I want you to connect with right now. And I've got a suggestion for you. So what I want to suggest to you is that what turns the low point into a turning point is that you learn something. This is true in all literature, and I think it's true in our lives as well. If you think about it, those times when you were sort of feeling low and you changed things, it's because you, you, you listened to what someone said or you, you had a realization and basically you learned something. So the question I have for you sitting there, wherever you are in your, in your dwelling during this period of great disruption and great uppy-downiness is what is it that this situation is trying to teach you? What is it you could learn here that would, the but is this has happened. So what is the thing that you're being taught that can turn what comes next into something delightful, unexpected, satisfying? If you really think about it, your life has been, always been a very wonderful life. It's been one, you've been wandering much more than you think. So enjoy it.